I will be 46 years old in October and I'm looking forward to it. I refer to the period of time between ages 45 and 65 as my golden years. Those are the years that I will turn my passion into my paycheck. It's the years when I will be able to accumulate the most wealth in my entire life. It's the years when I get to do things on my terms. Now, I've always viewed my life in segments. The first segment were what I refer to as my bronze years. These are when I was a teenager or a young adult, acquiring education, skills, knowledge, having babies, experimenting with relationships, and just trying to make ends meet. My bronze years served to enable financial security for me. Next were my silver years, and these were in my 30s. And this is where I took everything that I learned during my bronze years and used it to accumulate assets in preparation for my golden years, which is where I am today. My silver years facilitated financial independence. Now, when I turned 45 last year, I entered my golden years. And this is where I'm going to take the assets that I would have accumulated in my silver years and leverage them to do what I want to maximize my earnings. These years are my financial freedom and wealth generation years. Now, anything beyond 65, I refer to those as my platinum years. And this is when I just live. I just enjoy everything I've worked for. And no, I'm not waiting until retirement to enjoy life. That's not who I am because I'm doing it as I'm going along, especially in my golden years, which is why these are my favorite. Now, in order for me to make the most of my platinum years, I will be able to leverage the investments from my golden years, but I'll also be able to use those investments to enable continuity with my next generation. I'm going to spend my platinum years with if I have grandchildren I hope these boys my stepson and my son do something about it but let's assume I have grandchildren if not I have my nephew and I have some cousins because our family were very close so my cousins are like my siblings or my grandkids so I will impart knowledge on them to make sure they take care of the little that I've worked for in my golden years now my rock star whether you are in your bronze years, your silver years, or your golden years, this video is for you. I will share information in this video that will help to prepare you step by step as you embark on the next phase of your life. Welcome back to my channel, my YouTube family, my rock stars. I am sitting in my favorite chair today, enjoying some of the nice outdoor breezy weather and hoping that while I'm talking to you, a lizard doesn't visit my immediate vicinity. It's great to have you back. I hope all is well with you and your loved ones. Today, I'm gonna share seven ways that I will personally be investing during my golden years, which again is between the ages of 45 and 65 to achieve financial freedom. Now, before we jump into it, why do we need to invest? Investments are a way of growing our wealth and it provides opportunities for us to make more money while we sleep passive income and also in preparation of our platinum years which is when we retire because quite frankly when you retire you do not want to be making active income where you're trading time for money so this is passive income time and passive income is usually generated through investments now there are risks to investments as i would have shared before and i'm not a financial advisor so you need to evaluate carefully what i'm sharing and talk to your financial advisor to determine what works for you and what doesn't and if you don't have a financial advisor again just whatsapp me 
on the numbers for subscribers only and I will share some options with you and you can talk to them and they're excellent I use them personally so I know they'll be able to meet your needs and if they can't they'll recommend you to someone who can now in anticipation of my golden years which is where I am at right now I had to do a few things to make the best of it and those few things included going through my budget and eliminating my biggest expenses in order to free up my cash cash flow is critical when you're trying to invest and things like a mortgage and vehicle payments they're cash guzzlers they're usually up to 50 percent of your total income and in some cases it can be more and as such they limit your ability to spread your wings and capitalize on different investments so in anticipation of my golden years i had to launch what we describe as mission debt free mission debt free was to get rid of all our mortgages loans anything like that so we were able to free up our cash flow so if you're right now in your bronze stage or your silver stage you need to put down plans to be debt free by the time you get to your golden age by the time you get to your late 40s into 50s you need to be debt free and the only way to do that is to develop a plan and to stick with it so as a result of launching mission debt free we were able to increase our cash flow by six thousand us dollars per month or the equivalent because that's what it was costing us to cover our mortgage and vehicle payments beyond just myself and my husband but even for our children now I have six thousand US dollars or the equivalent to figure out how I'm gonna make the most out of it during my golden years which is the next 20 years or so now in your case my rock stars when you determine what that income is that you can free up you then need to put on paper exactly how you're gonna spend it over the next 20 years during your golden years to enable financial freedom and some of these we started some time ago Go, but we're turning it up a notch starting this year so going back to that six thousand us dollars that we have in disposable income from getting rid of our loans and mortgages that's what we're gonna use for the most part to invest in these different things now the first thing that we're going to invest in is high quality dividend stocks in US dollars. Now first let me address the US dollar piece because I do have stocks in Jamaican dollars and they are performing very well. They're dividend stocks and I plan to continue to increase my Jamaican dollar stock portfolio. However, we have to be very cognizant of the fact that our dollar has not had a good history as it pertains to devaluation when you are investing in a currency that devalues not only are you contending with that devaluation but you also are contending with inflation and other things that are happening in the market if I can invest in a more stable currency and avoid one of those two things I'm way ahead now why high quality stocks because I want stocks that represent a company that I believe in and a company that I trust will do well and why dividend paying stocks is why not collect dividends if you can a dividend is like a bonus or an incentive when you buy shares from a particular company they issue this at the end of the year it's like a we did well thank you for investing in our company and in all cases I only want at this stage of my life the golden years to invest in stocks that pay a dividend why not earn money while I sleep through dividends and gain from my stocks through appreciation over time that's earning two ways from stocks versus if I had Amazon shares for example that do not pay a dividend then I'm only earning one stream of income from my stocks so my focus is gonna be on high quality quality dividend stocks like a Apple. Now with everything going on in the economy, Apple stock prices have 
fallen with the Speaker of the House in the US, Nancy Pelosi, going to China and creating some amount of anxiety there. You'll realize that the stock market was impacted and I can only anticipate that that will continue. And it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. I'm going to capitalize on it from a financial perspective. So my hope is that stock prices for Apple and similar stocks will fall significantly, which will give me more buying power. So over the next 20 years, this is exactly what we're going to do as it pertains to stocks. From that 6,000 US dollars per month, we're going to take a thousand dollars per month and we're going to buy stocks like Apple. With a thousand US dollars per month for 20 years, that's $240,000 that we'll have to buy Apple shares. Now the stock price for Apple is about $166 yesterday when I checked and I've seen it go up as much as $179 in this period. Let's assume that between now and 20 years time the average share price for an Apple stock will be $250. So by investing a thousand US dollars per month over a 20 year period which accumulates to $240,000 and the average share price being at $250, we will be able to accumulate about a thousand Apple shares. Now I know the dividend yield will increase from the 87 cents that Apple paid out last year, but let's conservatively assume that it's 87 cents. For a thousand shares, it means that we'll get $870 for the year in passive income. Now I'm thinking by the time I get to my platinum years at age 65, the Apple stock stock price would have increased to about $450. Yeah, I'm being optimistic here, but I don't know how to be anybody else. From 170 to 450 is improbable, but as long as it's possible, I'm going to make the assumption. Now that's a return on our investment of $210 because $450 less what we bought the shares for, which is 250, that's $210 per share. When we sell those 1,000 shares, our ROI will be $210,000 plus our dividends that we would have accumulated for 20 years. Assuming it's still only 87 cents per share, it's gonna add up to about $30,000. So by selling our shares in Apple and adding the dividends that we're gonna make, our total return on investment is gonna be $240,000 over the next 20 years as we invest a thousand dollars per month from the six thousand dollars into stocks with an objective to enable financial freedom now the second thing that i'm gonna invest in is myself i'm gonna spend money on books as you can see here from my audible i have a ton of books that i'm either listening to going to start listening to or i still have books that i need to buy I'm going to do some online courses to strengthen those areas that I still have opportunities in. I'm going to be watching YouTube videos that's going to talk to me about personal finance and personal development. And I'm going to pay professionals to coach me on my areas of opportunities because we can all do with a good coach. I'm also going to invest in my health by trying to eat better. I'm going to do the free workout on YouTube because I really just can't stand driving from my house to go to a gym although I love working out in a gym and I'm gonna make sure that I do my mammograms and my executive profiles as I've been doing over the years you see the thing is by investing in myself I am able to leverage my full potential as a human being and what happens when we leverage our full potential is beyond our wildest imagination we're able to do things that we didn't think were possible and achieve and accomplish dreams that we thought were improbable. Why wouldn't you invest in yourself? So of that $6,000, I'm going to spend at least $200 US per month investing in more. And for the year, that works out to be about $2,500. Now, I expect that this investment in self is going to generate a huge ROI. 
Either I'm going to use this new knowledge and this vitality that I'm going to get from being healthier to start businesses, to invest in creative ways, or to do things that's going to create a 1,000 times ROI on the investment in myself. So again, for $2,500 per year invested in moi, I will be able to turn that into at least $25,000 per year, which is not, it's not very aggressive, quite frankly. Over 20 years, that will accumulate to $500,000 that I'm going to make from investing in me operating at my full potential during my golden years. Now in my golden years and on this path to financial freedom, the third instrument that we're going to invest in our bonds. Now today we invest in a few to include South Power, Portland, AIC. We're gonna increase some of those and we're also gonna expand on that portfolio. And all our bonds investments are in US dollars for the same reason I mentioned earlier. Now our objective is to get anywhere from 6.5% to as much as 9% with all incremental bonds that we add over the next 20 years during my golden ages. Now going back to that $6,000, we would have already spent a few dollars out of it, but we're going to make our investment in bonds the largest portion. So we're going to take 50% of that $6,000, which is $3,000 US dollars per month or the equivalent and we're gonna invest it in bonds. Now most of the bonds that we invest in they have a limit or a threshold or a base principle that you need to have to even qualify. So by investing $3,000 per month it would have to accumulate to a certain amount before we can invest. So what we're gonna do is keep it in an index fund and allow it to accumulate and whenever it gets to two years, which that is $3,000 per month times 24 months, which is $72,000. And of course, we're going to get some interest because it's an index fund, but let's not count that for now. Let's assume that every two years, we're going to accumulate $72,000. And at the end of each of those two years, we're going to invest that lump sum into a bond throughout my golden years. Now, because it will be happening over a period of 20 years, we can't simply take the $72,000 and multiply it by 10 because it's every two years. No, because it will be gradual. So we're going to make some assumptions. And the math that I'm using says that over that period of time, investing $72,000 every two years in bonds that pay on average anywhere from 6.5% to 9%, we would have accumulated $720,000 US dollars. Now, when I get to my platinum years, we're going to take that $720,000 that we would have accumulated from bonds and we're going to put it into a mutual fund that's paying about 8% return on our investment. And it means that we'll be able to collect every single month 4,800 US dollars, which means if it's just bonds alone, we can live comfortably. Now, the fourth investment that we're going to make in the next 20 years or so is we're going to invest in diversified index funds that pay at least 8% interest per annum. Now, we do invest in index funds today with several companies and we have monthly investments that are smaller and a few that are larger. Now, we still have $1,800 per month from the $6,000 left so we're gonna take a thousand dollars from that each month and invest it in index funds and we're obviously gonna do that for the next 20 years it would mean that by age 65 we would have accumulated 594,000 US dollars which most of that would have been compound interest now we still have about $800 left out of that $6,000 that we started with per month now the fifth 
thing that we're gonna invest in is real estate and we're gonna do so with commercial and residential properties the good news is that we already have land and we do have experience in real estate investment however we're gonna partner with a friend of ours who is a contractor slash real estate investor and we're gonna launch two specific projects the first project is gonna be residential and the second one is gonna be business now to fund these projects we're gonna borrow money from the bank so you see that eight hundred dollars that we have left as it accumulates we'll use that to offset some of the fees and the deposit but we're probably gonna take that from other investment or equity that we have in other properties but the bottom line is we're gonna use people's money in this regard to make money we're gonna build on a piece of land a 10 unit townhouse complex and each townhouse is gonna have three to four bedrooms with four to five and a half bathrooms now the cost to build we're gonna estimate that it's gonna run about 225,000 US dollars per unit and we're gonna do this in a modern minimalistic way now we're anticipating that we'll be able to sell one of these units for about 550 US dollars by the time we're done so the profit per unit it is $325,000 and we're gonna go ahead and assume that that $25,000 per unit is gonna be used to cover incidentals and expenses so we're not gonna count it in our gross profit number so at $300,000 US dollars per unit times 10 units it means that we would have made 3 million US dollars now remember we're using people's money through the bank and loans to fund this project and there is a cost to using people's money so let's assume that that cost after we go through all the closing costs the interest to the bank and everything that eats up a million dollars of our gross profit our net profit and our return on investment will be two million us dollars for these 10 townhouses now as it pertains to the commercial properties again we do have land and the good thing about this piece of land is right now it's residential but there is a major roadway being built adjacent to where this land is located so we're keeping our fingers crossed that that land can be commercial because we want to use it for commercial purposes now as you guys know we have Goffa, which is an e-commerce platform and i am confident that e-commerce is going to be the only way people buy in the future no doubt i mean there's still gonna be a few stragglers who insist on going to a store and just enjoy Enjoy that experience but the majority are gonna buy through e-commerce as you know Jamaica is a very central point as it pertains to commerce and the movement of goods so having warehouses in Jamaica is in my opinion the investment of the future the other reason why I like investing in warehouses is because you can transform it into anything let's say for example you create a warehouse it's not working out you can turn it into offices because it's an empty shell you can turn it into a BPO call center again because it's an empty shell so I also like the flexibility of warehouse as it pertains to real estate investment so we're gonna construct five purpose-built warehouses on this property and we believe it's gonna cost about hundred and fifty thousand dollars to build this warehouse and we're gonna borrow that money so five times 150 it means we need a loan that's 750,000 US dollars now the loan we're only gonna run it for 15 years we do not want anything long term we also don't want it too short although some banks will insist that because it's a real estate development it's done when the property is done but that's the trick here because we'll not be selling all the warehouses we can negotiate different circumstances which means that we're paying six thousand dollars per month in loan payments to cover these five warehouses we're gonna put Goffa in one the other four warehouses we're gonna rent out for about two thousand five hundred dollars each which is ten thousand dollars per month 
Now, after taking out the loan payment of $6,600 per month that we have to pay over to the bank, our return on the four warehouses will be $3,400 per month. The big takeaway here, guys, is to always use people's money to make money. Don't go on, take out your investment to do things like this when the bank is willing to give you a loan to do so. Now, let's assume that for the 15 years, we take that $3,400 per month that we're getting as surplus from renting the warehouses and we invest it in an index fund we would have accumulated 1.2 million us dollars and guess what 527,000 of that would come from compound interest. Then when we get to our platinum years, which is 65, we don't want to be in the warehouse renting business anymore. So we're going to sell those four warehouses. We're going to keep the Guffa one for obvious reasons. And we're going to assume that each of those warehouses would appreciate in value to about $300,000, which is double which means 300,000 per unit times four is 1.2 million US dollars that we would have made from selling the four warehouses. So the total return on investment from that project, when you take the rent that we would have collected for the 15 years and add it to the amount we got from selling the warehouses will be 2.4 million US dollars in returns from investing in these warehouses. Now, 2.5 million dollars invested in a bond or a mutual fund will reap 16,000 US dollars per month. Again, we can comfortably live off that in our platinum years or in the latter part of my golden years. Now, the sixth way that we're going to invest over the next 20 years is in our retirement fund. And of course, this is something that we started many, many years ago, but we are going to increase the contribution. Now, these contributions we're going to get from businesses that we have already launched or revenue and income sources that we already have. And we're going to increase our contribution to at least a thousand US dollars per month towards our formal retirement plan. So in 20 years, with $1,000 per month, we would have accumulated about $349,000. And when you add that to what we already have in retirement, it's a total of about $500,000. Now, number seven is somewhat controversial, but I would like to invest in cryptocurrency and I'm going to have my husband to convince because it's obviously an unregulated currency. And for the most part, it has not been doing well. But I believe in diversifying and having money in different currencies, especially knowing that the future will bring something different. And if it's going to be cryptocurrency, I want to have an edge and to get in there before everybody is starting to buy it. Now, because it's a little bit risky, I would say probably about $50,000 over the next 20 years. I'm not going all in, guys, because at this age, you are a little bit more careful careful about your risk because it's harder to recoup because you don't have the benefit of time. So from that 50,000 invested in crypto, I'm thinking that by the time we get to our platinum years, we would have made a profit or a return on our investment of about $50,000. So let's summarize everything that we would have invested in. So as it pertains to high value dividend stocks using the Apple example, that would have come up to about $200,000. $40,000. Investment in self would have generated $500,000. Bonds about $720,000. Diversified index fund $594,000. Real estate investment $4.4 million. Retirement fund $500,000. Cryptocurrency $50,000. That's a total of $7 million by age 65 and that's US dollars guys. So we will certainly be financially free and obviously this does not include what we would have already accumulated. Now, here's the beautiful thing. Let's say, for example, we only did 25% of what I just explained as our plan for the next 20 years. You know what that would have meant? We would still have accumulated 1.75 million US dollars. And by investing that in a mutual fund, 
we can live off 12,000 US dollars per month. Now my rock stars, why am I oversharing again? And yes, these are not exact. A lot of them are assumptions, but the point is we have the plan for our next 20 years laid out clearly on paper with specific projections, exactly what we're gonna invest in, how we're gonna invest, how much we expect as it pertains to our return on investment and exactly what we're gonna do with it. The question is whether you are at your bronze age, your silver age, or your gold age, do you have a plan for your financial freedom? Do you? Tell me in the comments if you do. Until you take the time to document this plan, you are not able to manifest it and you will not be able to attract it to yourself. It's so important that you do not leave your financial freedom to chance. Take control of your destiny, my YouTube family, and in doing so, reach for the stars. That way, if you fall short, you fall on the cushion of the clouds. Thank you for watching. If you learned anything new, please like the video. If you're not yet a part of our family, please touch that subscribe button and we look forward to welcoming you. And until next time, my YouTube family, my rock stars, walk good.